Today we're looking at nerines, how to divide them, how to grow them and a little bit about some of the varieties that are available. And to do this we've enlisted Jane from Tonkin's Bulbs. Hi, I'm going to introduce you to the wonderful world of nerines. They are a member of the Amaryllidaceae family and native to South Africa. Here at Tonkin's Bulbs we've been growing nerines for over 50 years and would have 50 plus different varieties, many of which my father has bred himself. The picture you're looking at at the moment, the deep um, red purple at the back, is one of Dad's own seedlings. Okay, what you're looking at now is a standard nerine bulb. Nerines can be left in the ground undisturbed for five to ten years before you have to dig and divide. If you are shifting your nerines or purchasing new ones, the best time is late summer through the autumn. Might sound strange because they are in bloom then, however it's the appropriate time because both the leaves and the roots are dormant. They make their new roots and leaves during the winter. So we're now going to show you how you might divide off the babies and to plant your nerines in a pot. Okay, so when you've dug your nerine bulbs you might find that they are like this one with a pup or a baby on the side. If you just use the heel of your thumb and just gently tease away it will come away with some root system as well. And this one's actually made two babies. So we just gently tease those off and they can be planted in a pot separate to the to the bigger ones so that they have room to grow and expand. So what we're looking at here now is the flowering size bulb. So the pups that I just took off will take anywhere from four to sort of six years to be this size and flowering. But if you're purchasing a nerine bulb of this size, you should get a flower the following season. If the bulbs have a stem attached like so, when you've dug them, you just simply snap the stem off and you can take that inside as a nice cut flower and you're left with your bare bulb. So now we're going to show you how to put one in a pot to start with. So I've got a six inch pot and we just use a regular um, potting mix. It's quite open mix. You don't have to spend a lot of money on um, composts or any of the really expensive potting mixes for your nerines because they don't really need it. Then what we add to it is just a small amount, only a tiny amount of a general bulb food or a slow release osmocote, sort of a three to six month would work well. So you just mix the fertilizer in so it doesn't burn any new roots as they're coming through. So once you've mixed in that little amount of fertilizer, you can take your bulb and place it in the middle of the pot and make sure that the neck of the bulb is just above the top of the pot and then gently fill in around your bulb and you need to leave that top part a little bit exposed and then give it a nice water to start with and leave it somewhere where it's exposed to the um, rain over the winter because that's when it makes its nice roots and leaves. So this is an established clump of a nerine, this one's Rushmere Star. So it actually flowers with its leaves. What you can see is that they do grow very well in the ground as well. So planting would be exactly the same, just make sure that you keep the neck of the bulb out of the soil and only a small amount of fertiliser. Just remember that a lot of bulbs are even better in the ground because we tend to overwater or underwater our pots. This one you're looking at at the moment is called Coconut Ice, bred by Eric Jennett over at Gembrook, Victoria, and requires the same sort of growing conditions as all nerines. So the best aspect would be a full sunny spot and they like to be kept dry between November and December other than what you can't prevent from above. And it's that dry rest followed by a soak in early January that promotes the flower spikes. Too much water and all you get is foliage and no flowers and too much fertiliser can promote too much foliage as well. What you're looking at now is Nerine Carusca Major. This one is one that they've used a lot in cross-pollinating and breeding, mainly because of the perfect form in the florets and the head size and the actual bulb size and the way it increases. This is also a Tonkin seedling that you're looking at now and very interesting to us because it's extremely hard to get a pure white because the only white in the species is the common Flex Rosa Elba. So we're very excited that we're getting um, a big headed and large floreted white nerine coming on. This is nerine novelty. It's quite a late flowering nerine, so a good one to end the autumn with. This is another new Tonkin seedling yet to be named, 
We're trying to breed a lot more of the purple tones into large headed Noreens. I'm hoping that you'll be able to see the um, purple margins on the edge of each of the florets. It's rather beautiful. If you'd like to know more about Noreens, then visit the website or contact Jane at Tonkin's Bulbs and the web address is here. In the meantime, subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on all sorts of plants, including many flowering bulbs. And as always, good luck with your gardening.